working people into the political process in the fight for justice. So, Senator Turner, thank you very much. Now, our campaign is about two fundamental issues. And the first is the absolute necessity to defeat the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country, Donald Trump. Now, obviously, there are strong political disagreements in our country, but my view is that People all across the political spectrum understand we cannot continue to have a president who is a pathological liar. We cannot continue having a president who is running a corrupt administration. America cannot continue having a president who is a racist a sexist, a homophobe, a xenophobe, and a religious bigot. And those are his good qualities. We are going to defeat Trump because the American people understand that we believe in democracy, not autocracy. That it might be a good idea to have a president who has actually read the Constitution of this country. And we're going to defeat Donald Trump because he is a fraud. He came to South Carolina went all over the country in 2016, and he said, trust me, I'm a friend of working people, and I am going to guarantee health care to everybody. Remember that? Well, not quite. What he ended up doing is trying to throw 32 million people off the health care they have and doing away with the protections for pre-existing conditions. Trump said, trust me, because we're going to have a tax plan that doesn't benefit the wealthy. And yet his plan ended up giving 83% of the benefits over a 10-year period to the top 1%. Donald Trump said, trust me, I am not going to cut Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Take a look at his budget. Massive cuts to Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Trump is a fraud. Trump lied. Now, some of you may have recently heard that the establishment is getting very, very nervous about our movement. You heard about that? And they're kind of going a little bit nuts about how they can try to defeat us. And they're saying, Bernie can't beat Trump. Really? Well, take a look at the last 50 national polls. We beat Trump 47 out of those 50. Take a look at recent polls in battleground states like Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. We beat Trump. And the reason we beat Trump is that we are doing something that has not been done in the modern history of this country. While Donald Trump is trying to divide us all up based on the color of our skin, or the country we were born in, or our religion, or our sexual orientation. What we are trying to do is exactly the opposite. We are bringing people together. We are bringing our people together, black and white and Latino, 
Native American, Asian American, around an agenda that works for all of us, not just the 1%. And we are doing that with an unprecedented grassroots movement. Now, the reason we won the popular vote in Iowa, the reason that we won the New Hampshire primary, the reason we won the Nevada caucus is that we had people knocking on doors all over those states. We had people on the telephones all over those states. We have already knocked on millions of doors throughout this country in this campaign, including almost 200,000 here in South Carolina. Now, let me be honest and tell you what I think requires of us to defeat Trump. We are going to need the largest voter turnout in the history of the United States. That's what we're going to need. And that means all of us, you and me, we're going to have to talk to our neighbors and our friends, often working people who are struggling today, who have given up on the political process. They're working two or three jobs. They're making 12 bucks an hour, can't afford child care. Maybe they're worried about retirement. And they've given up on the political process. Our job is to talk to those people and make them understand that if they do not get involved in the political process, if they don't vote, if they don't stand up and fight for justice, nothing is going to change. And our job is to talk to young people, the future of this country. And to tell them that if they want to reverse a situation in which everything being equal, unless we change it, they're going to have a lower standard of living than their parents. Where they are going to leave school deeply in debt where they're not going to be able to afford to buy a home. We're going to have to bring young people into the political process in a way that we have never seen in the history of this country. And that is what our campaign is doing. Now, to defeat Trump, you cannot run a conventional campaign. Same old, same old is not going to do it. And I say to my good friend Joe Biden, Joe, you can't do it when you have voted for terrible trade policies like NAFTA and PNTR with China, which have cost us millions of jobs. <laughs> Joe, you're not going to bring working people into the political process when you voted for a terrible bankruptcy bill. You're not going to bring people into the political process when you voted and strongly supported the war in Iraq. And you're not going to bring people into the political process when you have stood on the floor of the Senate time and again talking about the need to cut Social Security, Medicare, and veterans programs. Joe is a friend of mine and a decent guy, but that is not the voting record or the history that is going to excite people, bring them into the political process, and beat Trump. And I'll tell you what will defeat Trump. What will defeat Trump is a campaign that says we're going to raise the minimum wage to a living wage, 15 bucks an hour. It's a campaign that says we need equal pay for equal work. Women get 100 cents on the dollar. 
Now, I know that the political establishment here in South Carolina doesn't like unions. I like unions. And the political establishment and the big money interest don't like unions because they don't want to pay workers a decent wage. But I like unions. And that's why we are going to make it easier for workers to join unions and engage in collective bargaining and earn decent wages and decent benefits. This is America, the wealthiest country in the history of the world, yet we have an infrastructure, roads and bridges, water systems, wastewater plants, affordable housing, which is completely in an unacceptable position. Our infrastructure should not be crumbling. We're going to put millions of people back to work at good union wages, rebuilding our infrastructure. This is America. We should not have half a million people tonight, including 30,000 veterans sleeping out on the streets. You know what? If we can give tax breaks to billionaires, we can build 10 million units of affordable and low-income housing in this country. This is America, and we believe in education. And frankly, having gone around this particular state, education system is pretty dismal. Let's be frank about that. Let us be frank about that. In America, we understand that zero through four are the most important years of human development. Is that right? Okay. So how in God's name do we have a dysfunctional child care system where working families cannot find decent child care? Together, we will create high-quality, affordable, universal child care for every family in America. Together, we will triple funding for low-income Title I public schools. The quality of the education kids get should not be dependent upon their zip code. All over this country, all over this country and in South Carolina, wealthy communities have a property tax base, which enables them to fund their local schools. Poor districts do not. And that is why we're going to put substantial sums of money into those communities around America that are struggling in terms of quality of education. And I have been around South Carolina, and I have talked to teachers here who have worked, done a great job for 10, 20 years, and they're leaving the profession. You know why they're leaving the profession? because they're sick and tired of having to work two or three jobs to make a living. They're sick and tired of taking money out of their own pockets to buy school supplies. And that is why, because we believe in education, we believe in educators and teachers. And in a nation, in a nation where three people own more wealth than the bottom half of America, we can pay all teachers in America at least $60,000 a year salary. I want to see our best and our brightest. I want to see kids on college campuses saying, wow, I am so excited. Next year, I'm going to go out and do some of the most important work that can be done. 
I'm going to become a teacher and educate the kids. And when we talk about education, we understand the absurdity of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of bright young people who are unable to afford to go to college. We understand the absurdity of millions of people having left school deeply in debt. What we understand is that in the year 2020, we must redefine what public education means. No longer good enough K through 12. We must make public colleges and universities tuition free. You know what that means? That means that kids now in Charleston who are in the fifth grade will know that if they study hard and they do their schoolwork seriously, regardless of the income of their families, they will be able to get a higher education, college or trade school and be able to make it into the middle class. And when we think outside of the box, which is what our campaign is about, we're asking you to think outside of what you hear in Congress or what you hear in the media. And ask yourself a simple question. How could it be that 12 years ago, Congress, against my vote, voted to bail out the crooks on Wall Street? We did that. Two years ago, Trump and his friends, against my vote, gave a trillion dollars in tax breaks to the top 1% and very large, profitable corporations. See, that's the way, that's called business as usual. usual. When you're a wealthy campaign contributor, when you're a Wall Street executive, that's what you expect. Hey, I'm on Wall Street, of course you're gonna bail me out. I'm a billionaire, I only made $500 million last year. Can't make it, you gotta give me another tax break. Well, we say, if you could bail out crooks on Wall Street, if you give tax breaks to billionaires, you can cancel all student debt in America. Yeah.